What's up guys, this is Sheldon. Welcome back to RRC Tutorials. Today, I'm going to talk about reactive programming in iOS. As you guys may see in the screen, I'm putting two logos here. So these two guys are the most famous two frameworks that build on top of KVO and KVC to work with reactive programming. So the first one in the left bottom corner is called RX Swift and the second one is called Reactive Cocoa. So in the first lesson of this reactive programming, I'm not going to show you how to use these two frameworks. In this first lesson, I'm going to show you the basic, which is the fundamental of KVO and KVC, which is key value observing and key value coding in iOS. This two guys is actually the fundamental of reactive programming. This RX Swift and Reactive Cocoa are built most likely on top of this mechanism. So uh, why we want to learn reactive programming? So first, a lot of big companies they are using reactive programming. Learning reactive programming first can help you really build your professional career. Secondly, if you are making your own app, it can also help your app having a much better architecture. The demo project I'm going to work on today is just simply updating the labels text according to the text field dot text. Um, when we use straightforward programming, we might be update our label dot text using the text field delegate data update text. But in the reactive programming, what we need to do is just to simply first build the relation between the text field and the label. And second, every time when the text field or text is updated, the label will be updated automatically because the relation are there. So that's why it is called reactive. Again, in the demo project, I'm using KVO and KVC. So that's why the process looks a little bit more complicated than the straightforward programming. But when we use these two frameworks, it's going to be easy. I really hope you get the concept or the fundamental of this reactive way to do the programming. And I hope you enjoy the tutorial. As, and as always, the final project will be available in the GitHub repository that I will post the link down in the video description. So let's get started. So here we are at the Xcode. We're going to create a project called Reactive Programming Basic because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're going to do something in iOS which is related to reactive programming. So what is the way that iOS using to realize reactive programming? The answer is KVO and KVC which is key value observing and key value coding. As a good iOS developer, you should be able to see the difference between KVO and NS Notification Center. So actually, when we mention about KVC and KVO, most likely mentioning the observing mechanic within a class. But the NS Notification Center is more uh, like the communication between different classes even different files. What we're going to talk about today is just within one class. Let's do it now. If we come to the storyboard, let's actually put a text field. Um, we're going to need a button. And we're going to need a label. So, in the text field, we're going to type in something that when we hit the change button, it will show the previous value as well as the updated value. So, we need to do a little bit of configuration, which is making the label having zero lines. Um, you can set the word wrap and the alignment of the text. and. Basically, that's all we need. So if we open our view controller, um, we can drag IBOLIS, hold control, uh, text field. Also, you can drag an action here, change tapped. 
as well as you can drag a results result label here so that's all we need so as I said we're gonna use KVO and KVC so uh, one requirement for KVO and KVC is you have to make your class confirm to the NS coding protocol I mean if you are defining your own class you should do this uh, but um, we don't have to do it because by default every class that subclass from NS object is uh, confirming to the NS coding protocol by default so you don't need to um, add a, a protocol confirm to uh, any protocol here in our view controller class but we do need to override a few functions so uh, the first function we're gonna override is called observe value for key path okay actually that's the only one we need to make um, I mean we need to override if we don't use reactive what we're gonna do is first we get the tags of the text field which is let's say let's define let's define our uh, string called target string and what we're gonna do is when we hit change tab we are giving the value of target string to the tf dot text which is the text of the text field right uh, I mean we have to put exclamation mark let's let's make it safer actually let's use garlet text is equal to tf dot text in this case we don't need to um, unwrap it so after we are at after we added garlet sentence means the text has to be existing otherwise it will return here next line is we are setting the label result label dot text let's say the new value is equal to target string okay so uh, if we run our project we're gonna say whatever value we're setting to the text field in here we're gonna set the text into the target string and next line we're gonna set the result label text is equal to the result so let's say one two three it will show result one two three so this is a pretty straightforward but what we're going to do today is to use key value observing so what is kvo and kvc so kvc is just as simple as we can use self dot set value what is the value? Value is text for key target for key or key path doesn't matter All right we're gonna put this line here so instead of uh, use directly giving the value we can use this way alternatively which is KVC I mean this format is simply called KVC but you gotta be careful about the value here because we know we are setting our property called target string right so if we run our project here it will be no problem because we're typing it correctly but there is a drawback of using KVC let's see of course there has no issue but let's see we have some typo issue in this target string and in this case when we try to do something the app will crash actually this is this one is the drawback of KVC so you're gonna be very careful about using KVC okay right the app is crashing so so let's get back if we if we ignore KVC and 
only using a sign value and let's do the KVO, which is key value observing. So we have already overrided this function called observe value, right? What we're gonna use is the change. The change is actually a function, I mean, a dictionary that contains a lot of information. So what we're gonna do is we can define if key path is equal to, let's say, target string, right? Which means we're only observing uh, our property here. And in this case, we can print out old value which is change actually it's a dictionary of we can use the key ns keyed value um, uh, not keyed ns key value change key dot old key this one is to get him the previous value and this one we can get the new key what we're doing I mean yeah we have to put a question mark because this is an optional um, value we need to put a default thing because that is optional otherwise it will give you warning but it's fine if you try to compile okay also we need to add observer okay so Let's use self dot add observer. Observer itself for key path. Again, it's target string. Option is dot old and dot new. So these two options are actually related to whatever uh, you're gonna use here. If you're expecting more value, you have to configure more here by simply choose something and uh, we are not expecting any context so we can simply set nail there and we can also delete other um, kind of useless uh, delegate functions okay so now if we run our project we can observing all the changes Let's see if we put one, two, three over there, and if we expand our console, change, nothing is printed because I, we are trying to directly assign the value there. In here, we need to use self dot set value for key, right? So to use KVO, you have to use KVC at the same time. Yes, so as you can see, we're printing something in the log that old value is actually empty string and the new value is 111, okay? So, so far you may be thinking, what, what the hell I'm doing here? Uh, what's the meaning of organized thing in this way? And I'm gonna show you in a minute. So as you can see, we are printing old new value, old new value when we change it. So the magic will be here. What we actually expecting is not like just the log. We don't care about the log actually. What we really care about is when we know the key path is target string. I mean, we can set the label dot text is equal to value for key. What we're actually doing here, I mean, we had to cast into a string, right? This is very obvious. So what we're doing here is actually, we are building a relationship within this observe value function, right? We're making sure when the key path, when actually the target string is changes, we are reflecting to the result text immediately every time when the target string is changed so 
What's the advantage of this? This could be extremely helpful when, let's say, you have a lot of UI elements that might be related to some web services. Assume results are coming asynchronously, which means you don't know which result comes first and which one comes later. So the best way is to just build the relation between the services and the corresponding UI elements, which may be labeled in this case, and when the service gets the results, just updating our label. The other case might be when we are having multiple view controllers, let's say using the same view model, and we're going to share the data into different view controllers. So anywhere when we update the corresponding view model, every related view controller will be updated automatically. So this could be dream, like you just need to update one place and every other places will be updated automatically, which will be so, so helpful. So what I'm trying to do is to explain the basic layer of the most powerful two famous third-party SDK of this reactive programming that has been applied to iOS. As you guys know, every third-party framework must be built on top of the native way. These two guys, RX Swift as well as the Reactive Coco, is the one that has been built very mature to help us, the developers, to build reactive relation very easily. To explain the frameworks directly to you guys may be difficult. That's the reason I'm trying to make this video to explain you guys the basic layer of what is KVC and what is KVO to uh, make you guys understand the mechanic behind the two frameworks. In next video tutorial, I'm gonna start to teach you guys to work on the RX Swift framework. All right, I hope you enjoy and please subscribe and leave any comments, like, and I will see you in next tutorial soon.